Hello everyone, my name is Arun. Welcome to my channel. In this video, I'll be talking to you about Sphinx. Now, Sphinx is a Python documentation generator. It's a tool that is useful for making beautiful and at the same time easy to follow uh, documentation. So, let's say you are some kind of a developer or a software engineer who is developing his or her own software or some libraries and you want to document it properly. Let's say you are some kind of a student um, or a professor or a teacher, whoever it may be, and you have a lot of notes with you and you want to organize them and put them in a proper manner. In those kind of scenarios, um, you, you like to need a documentation tool and Sphinx helps you in that scenario pretty well. What Sphinx is, is a tool completely made from Python with the help of other technologies like HTML, CSS, JavaScript and a few other libraries and helps you to create these documentation cleanly. It takes input files, uh, namely uh, markdown and restructured text files or even plain text files and converts them into easy to view HTML pages. You can convert them into a text file or a PDF through a text file using the latter compiler that might be in, that's installed in your system. You can also make uh, manual pages or some plain text documentation, whatever it be. If you have some code in the, uh, if you have some code in your documentation, you want to highlight them, syntax highlight them. It's possible using the pigments highlighter. It has a nice structure in it, and at the same time, you don't have to worry too much about the uh, indexing and indexing. It'll take care of it cleanly for you. So. And uh, so it's uh, very uh, easy to work with and not much complex, there's not much of complexity in it. And besides that, it has quite a lot of extensions inside that can be used for the getting the best out of this uh, tool. And there are many inbuilt extensions and there are many in extensions that are contributed by users from secondary repositories. You can install them and get, uh, get even more beneficial, benef beneficiary features out of it. So enough of me talking and this is your two minute introduction. So let's get started with. So as the first requirement to use Sphinx, you need Python, that's mandatory. So I have Python installed in my laptop through uh, Anaconda. So I have ev almost everything done. So I can use just type Conda install uh, Sphinx and press enter. With the internet connection on, it will go down, go and download the required packages to install Sphinx, and then it does it for you. If you are using uh, pip installers, then you can type pip install Sphinx, Sphinx, and press enter. It will do the same. Either way, uh, you either way that will install the requirements. And now to check if you have installed properly, you need to have this Sphinx quick start. Okay, it should automatically pop up. And if you have that, you're ready. So what I'm going to do is I have a folder over here, Sphinx underscore quick start on which is empty. All right. And over here, I have it empty. And in this, I go to my terminal in this particular location and type Sphinx minor hyphen quick start presenter. It'll ask me for the root part of the documentation. I'm going to keep it as it is. So it's asking me for separate source and build directories. Usually you don't need it, but if your if your documentation is pretty la going to be large, it's better to organize. So keep I'm going to press yes. So there will be folders like static and templates inside, which will have a prefix in front of them. So let it be. That will be easier to distinguish from other folders. So let it be. As for the project name, let's give it something. Uh, Sphinx uh, Quick Start. Okay, an author. So if you ha you can type your name. If there are multiple authors, you can just type their names inside and go on and on. And the version number, I'm going to keep it as 1.0. Okay, I'm going to create a new terminal so that uh, so that you know it's still up uh, high up. So the uh, subversion of the project will name version will be like A. So it's going to be 1.0 A. The language let it be English source file suffix i'm going to use, by default it's rst restructured text file so i'm going to keep it as it is but i'll tell you a tweak so that you can use markdown files as well and in the my name in the my name of the master documentation uh, master document it will be indexed by default without the without the suffix so let it be as it is if you want you can put it change it as main if you want doesn't matter and then it says you want to build up a uh, epub reader epub builder no Automatically insert doc strings uh, from modules. I don't think so. 
automatically test code snippets in docs doc test blocks no link between uh, sphinx documentation of other projects no write to do entries that can be shown or hidden on build if you want you can press yes over here otherwise you can press no see by, by the way just a reminder all of these are uh, custom requirements since when this tutorial i'm going to keep it short and don't want, no, i'm not going in detail about this but of, of course you're welcome to press yes and uh, based on your requirement proceed anyway over here coverage checks for documentation co checks for documentation coverage no this is for including mathematical libraries no again this is again for mathematical libraries no conditional inclusion of content based on config values no view code no i don't need that github pages publish documents in github pages no yeah create make file yes for this you put yes because this is necessary it will make your job easier and then if you are windows you better press yes and get a create a batch file so that you can run them in one single shot since i'm in linux i don't need it I press no and there you go your configuration is ready now i can put this up so that um, there you go i quit this up and now if i uh, look at my folder yep i'm a ravenclaw uh, as for the part of my website just a side note anyway going on uh, in this folder over here you have a build here you have a build folder and inside this as of now there's nothing it'll come it'll go and populate after some time the source folder there is a underscore static file folder underscore template file by default this these two will be empty and as you compile your documentation build it up it will get filled and there are two files over here conf.py and configuration it's a configuration file in python and an index file in uh, restructured text file so what i'm going to do is let me open up this in terminal all right so let me i mean open up this configuration file in python there you go so this configuration file over here is pretty extensive and it has all the requirements uh, it has all the requirements to start your entire documentation so it has all the inputs you give like the underscore in, underscore options the source suffix the in master documentation file name there is this index the project name our copyright name author name version number sub release version language pigment style to do list html theme so on and so forth it has all the requirements whichever you need whichever whichever it's required so it takes care of all of them you're uh, welcome to go and tweak them as per your convenience and go about with it so i'm right now i'm just going to uh, you know i'm going to quit this up i'm going to open a new terminal over here i'm going okay there's a reason why and uh, by default it just takes only markdown files so if you want to sorry, by by default sphinx only takes restructured text files as the as its markup language but it has the support for markdown files as well okay for that you need to install this particular library called as a uh, recom uh, package of library called as recommend mark so there you go first for that you just type pip uh, install recommend mark and press enter it will take care of it cool once you have that you can go inside this bim uh, configuration file all right and in the location where it's asked for extensions i mean the suffix over here you can uh, uncomment this particular line and i mean uncomment this line and comment this line and there's one more line you have to add you see this you have to add this markdown parser line over here so I'll, you can you can directly copy this and paste it in your browser sorry paste it in your configuration file there and just to make sure this is separate from, this is different from the others you just put uh, you put you put a name here you put a comment over here to indicate this is separate from, from others all right there you go now you can write and uh, save this and exit this exit this now let's have a look at this uh, index file all right so this is how my index file looks like now i can exit this okay so this is my table of contents tree and this is some default indexes and tables let me write something over here 
hello this is my uh, sample tutorial documentation for Sphinx there you go all right now I save this and save this and quit this okay let me clear this up now I made some changes to the index file now what I have to do is I just have to go one level out you see this make file over here just type make HTML and press enter it will run up these commands and uh, if, if there aren't any error and if you get some message like build succeeded build finish you are good to go now to see your documentation you just go to your build file and inside go to the HTML file okay and here there will be uh, this index.html so you can use any browser of your choice I'm going to use Google Chrome and then open this up there you go Tada! this is our documentation first page it says hello this is my sample tutorial documentation for Sphinx neat now uh, this is just my front page now let me go and do a little bit of tweaking so let me I'm going to keep this as it is I'm going to keep this as it is I'm going to come minimize this so let me oh one more level up let me go to sources there it is now I'm going to create a new file vim um, intro.md okay so let's create something over here intro this is the introductory paragraph paragraph uh, list just some random input so this is a sample list list it uh, item one list item two oh, I need to put the uh, apostrophe mm, asterisk in the front and then let's see sample C code C so if when I put a uh, three a triple uh, three uh, reverse codes and you end with three reverse codes you can write your code you can write your code directly so hash include stdio dot h int main um, what else uh, printf hello world all right and let's see just for the sake of completion return zero there there now our documentation is I mean our file is did I finish it hello what just happened hey guys welcome back uh, what I guess my terminator program just got stuck anyway so I had so I had to rewrite this file from the beginning anyway point is now we just have a sample markdown file ready alright so we have an intro introductory paragraph a list a small sample C code right so let me write this and quit the save this okay now with this intro file ready we just have to make a small correction to our index file okay and over here over here we just have to go to this TOC tree this is the table of contents tree and over here after three spaces I just have to type intro and that's it now write and quit this go one level up and just type make HTML presenter please work yeah if you get a, if you get information like build succeeded build finished you're good to go and now go to, uh, let's go to Google let's type Google Chrome and then build HTML wait I think I don't need this I already have the page opened up in Google Chrome so I just have to refresh this and there you go yeah now you have content and you see there is intro and I click this you see intro there's list and the sample C code we wrote neat alright 
This way, you can um, write uh, write and attach multiple documents of your choice, and it's very easy to go about it. Now, just just on the closing side, if you think this uh, theme is a bit not so, this theme is not beautiful. Yeah, by default, it comes up with the alabaster theme, which is very, which is plain and simple. There are a few more themes that you can go and work down. Well, I mean, use with. So just type a uh, markdown themes and things so not marked on sorry um, let's see html themes sorry you just type html themes and uh, sphinx and you'll get more themes by default the theme that you get is alabaster which is this one over here you have other themes like classic sphinx doc scrolls traditional agogo nature haiku biz style pyramid and a few others and also if, and also there they have provisions to, provisions for you to create your own themes how do you can go on to tweak them up how they mention how you can distribute your own theme as a package if you want to and at the same time you have other third party themes like Spring's rtd theme okay which you can install by following the instructions given over here okay now uh, I'm just going to tell you how you can change to one of the one of the other standard themes over here but you're welcome to go and um, play around with this as per your convenience so first let's go to this page over here cd source okay and in the configuration file then configuration file just look for the private place called as HTML theme all right over here instead by default it's alabaster and instead of alabaster you type the other one classic right and quit this and then go one level out and then make html usually it should work but sometimes you get this exception error and especially for the version i'm using i'm getting this exception error so just copy the copy i mean you if you want to know why exactly this just copy this and paste it on the google and what i figured out is that uh, is that i got the exact same error as this question over here uh, in stack ex in stack overflow and it says that uh, the, you have to comment out these particular lines in the code because somebody else has the same issue so i'm using sphinx 1.6.3 I'm using the exact same. This person has used this version. I'm using the exact same version. All right. So the thing is, for my environment, I just have to uh, comment these lines out. So let me do that. So which is it? Source ei uh, config. So if I go to the bottom, yeah. I have to comment out these lines. Hopefully, this should take any errors. It shouldn't give me any errors. All right. So let me write and quit this up. Now let me make make this HTML. Please work. Who? Fine. And now, so this is my initial page, and now if you refresh it, there you go. A completely different theme without any worries at all. Just a small correction, and you get everything done. And even your syntax highlighting code also changes. So this is just to give you an example of how you can, you know, start tweaking it, start making your own documentation codes and make some tweaks. So. If you're happy with this current set of uh, tools in this, you can just go and work it out and then uh, be happy, contented about Like if you're like, okay, I don't want this. I want to go and tweak this a little more. You can all, you can go and customize the configuration file and search or even make your own themes and start working with it. As far as I've noticed, um, Sphinx is, in my personal opinion, Sphinx is like a very good documentation, one of the best documentation tools I've ever seen. It can be used offline as well as online. All right, and uh, a variety comes up with this beautiful. So I suggest this. I suggest you how to have a look at this, and I I suppose you will like you like it very much. Well, that's all I have for you all in this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all next time in another interesting video. Till then, take care.